If you have energy, you can do work. When you do work, you will lose your energy. Today, we will discuss on energy. By definition, energy is the capacity to do work. If a body is able to do work, we will say that the body has energy. Consider a case. A moving body. A is a moving body. Okay, it moves. Another body is here. That is B. The body B is stationary. A is the moving body. And the body B is stationary. The question is, is it possible for the body A to do work on B? Yes. This moving body, this A is moving and it hits the body B. That means force is applied. And as a result, this body B starts moving. Force is applied and the body is displaced. That means work is done. So the moving body A can do work on the body B. So we will say that the moving body A has energy. That's all. But at the same time, this body, work is done by A on B. As a result, B starts moving. Now B is moving. So quite naturally, B is having energy now. When work is done by A on B, energy is transferred. Energy of a moving body A is transferred to B. So it is not wrong if you define work like this. Work is defined as the transfer of energy. Whenever work is done, energy is transferred. Work can be converted into energy. Energy can be converted back to work also. Work and energy are interconvertible. Both are same. Work is done means energy is spent. I said work is done. Work is done implies energy is spent. Whenever work is done, energy is spent. So, this energy has the same unit of a work. What is the SI unit of energy? SI unit of energy is SI unit, SI unit of energy is SI unit of work we have already studied that joule. So CGS unit, CGS unit of energy, CGS unit of energy is here because energy is the CGS unit of work and the relation also you know, 1 joule, 1 joule is equal to 10 to the power 7 earth. But in this chapter, uh, for ICC we have to learn a few more units of energy. We will go for that. First, let us go for the unit calorie. This unit can be used for any form of energy. But generally you will come across this unit when you talk about heat energy. The energy released from food also expressed in this unit. Uh, for instance, uh, one medium size apple will give you 90 calories of energy. Let us see what is this one calorie. Take one gram of water. Okay, one gram of water. Yeah. One gram of water. One gram of water. And the temperature of the water, let it be 14.5 degrees Celsius. Okay. If you supply heat energy, of course, temperature of water will increase. I am supplying heat energy. And the temperature of water increases. Temperature of this water increases uh, to a higher value. Let me say 15.5 degrees Celsius. 
For that, you, we have supplied heat energy. The heat energy supplied to increase the temperature of 1 gram of water from 14.5 degrees Celsius to 15.5 degrees Celsius is taken as a 1 candle. In smaller classes, uh, you might have uh, learned this, but maybe like this. The amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water through 1 degree Celsius is called 1 calorie. That is not wrong, but in 10th standard, we need the definition this way. 1 calorie is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water from 14.5 degree Celsius to 15.5 degree Celsius. 1 calorie is equal to 1 calorie is equal to 4.186 joule. Uh, sometimes we will approximate uh, this to 4.2 joule. Now, let us go for another unit of uh, energy that is kilowatts hour. This unit generally we use to measure electrical energy. Actually, kilowatt hour is the commercial unit of electrical energy. At your home, there is one electricity meter which takes the reading in this unit. So, simply if you say uh, 500 units of electrical energy is consumed in your home that means 500 kilowatt hour of energy is consumed let us understand what is 1 kilowatt hour before that let me go for the definition of power again power is equal to you have learned power is equal to work done by time taken Just now we have seen that work done is uh, same as energy spent. So instead of this work done, I can replace it by the word energy spent. Energy spent, power is equal to energy spent divided by time taken. Well, in this case if I rearrange this, I will get energy is equal to, energy spent is equal to power into time taken. Energy unit, you know, SI unit of energy is a joule. So, 1 joule is equal to SI unit of power is a watt. 1 watt multiplied by 1 second. That means, 1 joule is equal to 1 watt second. We need this. Remember, 1 watt second is equal to 1 joule. Well, let us come back to this kilowatt hour which is the commercial unit of uh, electrical energy but it can be used to measure any form of energy ok so to define or to understand this kilowatt hour very easy just imagine one electrical appliance of uh, power 1000 watt ok here is I have got one electric ion and its power is uh, uh, 1100 what 1100 watt assume for the time being just assume it is of a 1000 watt if i am using this electrical appliance for one hour then we say that energy consumed by this appliance is one kilowatt hour i said like this one kilowatt hour is the electrical energy consumed by an electrical appliance of power 1000 watt working for one hour but it can be this uh, can be the unit of any form of energy you know so we can generalize that one kilowatt hour is the energy consumed by an agent of power thousand watt in one hour yes how this one kilowatt hour related to SI unit of energy we can see that one kilowatt hour let me write uh, the unit like this one kilowatt hour okay 
is equal to one kilowatt hour is equal to this is a unit of energy. Here this one, energy is unit of energy. Power into time. So I have like unit of power. That is here what one kilowatt. 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 What is the SI unit of energy? Kilowatt is a bigger unit. That's all. Kilowatt means a thousand watt. Well, multiplied by one kilowatt hour. That means this one. One kilowatt hour is equal to one kilowatt multiplied by one hour. So one kilowatt, as you understood, that is thousand watt multiplied by one hour. One hour is a sixty multiplied by sixty. This is seconds. Okay. Well, so when I multiply, what will I get? Three six. Uh, one two three. One two three. Okay. This much watts. This watt second, watt second is uh, nothing but joule only. So instead of watt second, I can write joule. Let me write this number in a scientific notation. Three point six. I made the point here. Three point six into ten to the power one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So this is the relation. One kilowatt hour. One kilowatt hour is equal to three point six into ten to the power six joule. This is the relation between one kilowatt hour and joule. You have to learn this derivation for your examination. Now let us go for another unit of energy. Electron volt. Electron volt is a small unit of energy. Generally, we use this unit when we talk about energy of elementary particles like proton, electron, etc. Before defining electron volt, let me ask you something which we have learned. In ninth standard, what is potential difference? Electric potential difference. Potential difference between two points is the work done to carry unit positive charge from one point to the other point. I said like this: potential difference. Potential difference between two points is the Work done to carry unit to positive charge. That means work done per charge. Potential difference is work done per charge. Work done means energy spent only. So I can replace this work done by what energy energy spent. So energy spent divided by charge. So if I am uh, I write an expression for energy. Energy is equal to energy is equal to potential difference multiplied by charge or charge multiplied by potential difference. Unit of energy, you know, as a unit of energy is joule. Let us go for one joule here. Then quite natural, this will be one coulomb multiplied by potential difference. Unit is gold, one volt. Okay, one coulomb multiplied by one volt. That is equal to one joule. We need this. Well, we come back to this electron volt. How will we define electron volt? Actually, electron volt is the energy gained by an electron when it is accelerated at a potential difference of one volt. Uh, imagine two plates. This plate I am planning to give negative charge to this plate. And positive charge to other plate. The work is very easy. Just connect it to negative terminal of a cell. Okay. And from here, of course, from here we can be connected to positive terminal. Positive terminal of the cell is connected to this plate. So quite naturally, this will be negative plate. This one is a positive plate. So there is a potential difference. Let me say that let this potential difference be one volt. Well, now we have got two plates. Potential difference between the plates is one volt. Now, 
Imagine what electron is here. Quite naturally, this electron is an electric field now. This will get accelerated. This electron is moving towards the positively charged plate. It is accelerated towards positively charged plate. So it will gain, it will gain energy. When it reaches here, it will gain energy, it gains kinetic energy. If it reaches there and it will have some kinetic energy here, that energy is called one electron volt. That's all. One electron volt is the energy gained by an electron when it is accelerated through a potential difference of one volt. Well, now we have to find the relation between electron volt and SI unit of energy. Let us go for that. One electron volt. Electron volt is a unit of a energy. Energy is equal to product of charge and potential difference. So one electron volt is equal to charge of an electron. Charge of an electron multiplied by one volt. Charge of electron, you know, that is one point six into ten to the power minus nineteen coulomb multiplied by one volt. That's equal to one point six into ten to the power minus nineteen. Coulomb volt, Coulomb volt, one Coulomb multiplied by one volt, that is nothing but the joule. So I can write like this. So this relation also you must remember: one electron volt is equal to one point six into ten to the power minus nineteen 